this does so much for us. It actually boosts the the natural immune, like it, you know, it, it it has so much effect on the immune system and the innate immune response, and it balances out your white blood cell counts and this the this, this sort of in a way like rebalances or resets your stress hormones. I mean, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. So sometimes the shift in the narrative is 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 what most what many of us need, and then. Mm-hmm. By just shifting the narrative, it kind of opens up a lot more possibility. And we're like, hmm, actually, this feels great. You're listening to A New Way of Living with Dan Voss, inspiring you to a new life of breathwork, cold therapy, and plant medicine. In this week's episode, my guest is Lee Ewan. Lee coaches people around the world in the art of conscious breathwork. He's trained with several of the world's top recognized breathwork evangelists and has spent years exploring breathwork techniques to aid in anxiety, pain, and stress relief, as well as sports and athletic performance enhancement. He's based in the cooler climate of Finland, but hails from sunny Australia and represents a real life story of adaptation and resilience. Lee's also trained in bulletproof coaching and holds instructor certifications in several other breathwork methodologies such as Wim Hof Method, Oxygen Advantage, and Breathology. Lee, welcome to the show. Hi, mate. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm very excited for today's conversation, knowing that you have taken a deep dive into the field of breathwork and cold exposure. And I want to start off hearing more about how this came to be. It's for me, when when I meet people that are in this, this space of breath work, cold exposure, um, you know, Wim Hof style activities. I always love hearing about how they first discovered it and what brought them to to this world. Uh, so you maybe can share a little more about where you got started in all of this. Yeah, thanks, mate. Um, uh, look, it, it, it's it's a, it's an interesting one because I I've been living in Finland for fourteen years. And, you know, I'm a typical masculine, uh, you know, push, 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 uh, certain periods of time in my life. I didn't want to feel things, um, you know, alcohol and things like that. It's, it's, you know, people use those kind of things for different reasons. Uh, we create different bad, maybe bad habits, negative, uh, loops in our lives. And, um, I just, I just, it wasn't doing me any good. It didn't feel good. I was, I was I came from a um, sunny co- climate of Australia, of course, ended up in Finland, came here for love, stayed for the weather is the, is the kind of unofficial <laughs> story. And after about eight months, I got a, a, I was super depressed because the relationship didn't work out. There was a whole bunch of acclimatization things that I need to, to kind of, you know, get used to the weather. Uh, the cold culture, the fa- the language barrier, all kinds of things, and uh, I was like the guy that was walking around blaming everybody else for a period of time in my life as well, you know. And um, you know, it's you know, if you move somewhere, if you go to a different part of the world, it's not you know, is it is it kind of like the wave that I want, you know, five five point six million or whatever the population is here? Do I want five? Am I actively going to go around and try and change five point six million people to the way I want? Or should I be doing some things where I kind of acclimatize and uh, be, be part of this place? You know, do I really want to stay here? What value do I put on it? And uh, of course, you know, no better place to get involved in cold exposure here. No better place in the world uh, to experience sauna because sauna is a Finnish word. Uh, it's the only Finnish word in the English dictionary, actually. And, um, you know, there's more saunas than people. And... When I started leaning in, when I felt so bad, I started leaning into the cold and, and, and kind of dabbling with that and then understanding that, you know, gee, I feel good from this. I actually feel good from sauna. And then somehow um, breathing became part of that. Of course, Wim Hof method and becoming an instructor of this method became, like, you know, that was one of the main reasons how I got or one of the first points where I really dived deeper into it. But like many people, I think we've all been experimenting with our breathing from time to time as well. You know, like I mean, my brother used to kind of um, play these stupid games on on the on the on our bed at home. We'd be like like part, you know, hold our breath until we pass out, and we had this funny feeling. So we were kind of mm. toying around with things like that, and being being sort of like an, an athlete or a, 
you know, aspirations of being an athlete in earlier life, you know, oxygen and breathing plays a big part of it as well and recovering and re- recovering the breathing, having a good gas tank for to to run around faster than the other other people. So you know, it's a life. It's it's a lifetime of experience, as we always can say, because we're breathing all the time. But actually, it's sort of like the the growth accelerated once I got into Finland, and once I started trusting and uh, trusting myself again, wanting to feel more things again, instead of like not wanting to feel things. It's about actually, let's feel more. Let's feel. Let's take mm-hmm. all these all the colors of of the rainbow. Let's take them all in. You know. Let's you know and experience everything and not not shy away from everything accept everything and um know that it has its place and so the breath work was a way that i could not only do that but like meditate at the same time and that was the first mm-hmm. time i was able to meditate um by using breathing and breathing practices conscious breath work wow there's so much there that i can relate to um i love that aspect of wanting to feel things again i've been there before where you know alcohol was a big part of my life and you know, something I turned to in times where I wanted to numb pain or distract myself from my reality. Yeah. And so many of us do that, right? We use certain substances or, or even just lifestyle choices, right? Just spending too much time in front of the TV or, I don't know, just any kind of avoidant behavior. And for me, when I discovered the cold, when I discovered breath work, how it made me feel, it was like, yeah, I want more of that. I want to be able to feel more and be more aware be more present. Um, just give me more of all of that. So I totally yeah. relate. Yeah. And, and also like just a little bit more for that. I mean, it's a lot of the time, I think, you know, like an ice bath situation, a lot of people uh, have a, in a way they, how they do the ice bath. It's a try, they're trying to get out of the body. They're trying to, they're trying mm-hmm. to not be present. They're just trying to have the body do its thing and then sort of like concentrate some, you know, get the mind or the, the spirit or the soul or even somewhere else. Um, and if you really think about it, that's what we, a lot of us have been doing for many, many, you know, like you said, uh, you know, leaning in on alcohol or, or some of these other substances, the nicotine, smoking, whatever, what have you, marijuana, mm-hmm. things like that. Um, different strategies where we're sort of like trying to have these, um, we're trying to get out of the body or then we're trying to be somebody else. And I think actually the cold exposure, uh, breathing, you know there are there are possibilities and there are days or times where we practice this where we do feel like we get out of the body because we feel so amazing and maybe we have these kind of you know these amazing moments but overall the majority of these things uh, at least the starting point is inside of the body and then ha- mm-hmm. understanding how the body's working and i think this has been like a kind of breakthrough for me personally because like learning to trust the body again you know, um, after many years of sort of being in between and sort of like not respecting it or not sort of listening to it and not having this kind of like uh, connection with it. Um, and then you, it gets interesting when you start tracing back your relationships and things like that. It's like, well, damn, I was like, I, I can't even do this myself. And then I'm trying to trust another person, a partner or somebody. And I, I let, like, how did that? Oh, maybe that's why it didn't work because I can't do it myself. So how am I going to let <laughs> someone else like, you know, touch me or get close to me or, you know, have that kind of um, sensuality or whatever with me. So, yeah, it kind of opened up a lot more understanding uh, of, my, of myself and, and then I could, like, look, look back in parts of my life and say, oh, yeah, okay, damn, that wasn't so good. Like, you know, uh, ugh, I don't want to be there again. Hmm. I feel like we're the same person here. I, I have had a very similar path in my discovery of my breath and, and cold exposure as well mm-hmm. is uh, having that experience and then realizing how much you can get in tune with, with yourself physically, but more so emotionally and spiritually. And for me, it was like a really good time to do some self-reflection. Exactly what you were talking about is like, if I'm expecting somebody else to love me, whether that's a romantic partner, my family, I got to take care of myself first. I got to do some things that uh, go deeper than, you know, surface level of where I've been living and how I've been going about life. You know, like just go deeper, learn more about yourself, ask questions, figure out who you are, love yourself, accept yourself. And only then when you do that is when you can expect somebody else to do that with you. 
Yeah, and, powerful you know, stuff. It's, it's everywhere, right? I mean, you know, there's a there's a perfect uh, sort of analogy for this, and it's like it's staring at us right every time we're in that plane and then the seat in front of us. We pull out the card, and it says, "Put the oxygen mask on yourself before you help yeah. anybody else or the children or whoever around you." And this is like a metaphor for life, right? You you you're no good, you know, you, not not to not to go already too far in this direction, but I mean. I've seen a lot of facilitators, uh, not only of breathwork, but I mean, people that are going through uh, some extremely difficult circumstances in their life. And then they come, they're there to facilitate a session. And it's like, what kind of energy mm. and how, how you, you know, how can you, how can you share that beautiful, those elements when you're kind of already, you're still going through this heavy process yourself. So there's a lot of things where this comes into it. But um, as, as you know, as, as, as many of your listeners, viewers uh, know, you know, the, the, it's a compass, right? The breathing is like a compass. It shows you and uh, kind of it shows you how you are, um, mm. how you're doing, uh, how you're living, how you're feeling. Um, you can it reflects through the breath, and then we look at the cold exposure, which we've spoken already about a couple of times. I mean, that's the ultimate mirror, right? I mean, this is a fight or flight or a stress stress situation simulator in, for this kind of simu uh, situation if you will and this is the ultimate reflection like this is really how how um how you how you would manage stress right now how what, yeah. what condition you're in what sort of like mental uh frame you're in right now um mm. yeah so it's kind of interesting to you have these tools that um not only give us so much physical benefits but also sort of like give us this kind of measuring measuring stick or like this, like I said, compass as to who I we love are that analogy. in that particular moment. Yeah. I love that analogy. A compass is uh, our breath or even something like cold exposure is a, a compass for us to give us direction, to kind of gauge where we're at in life, how we're showing up. Um, when you talked about, you know, the cold, how it can be a, a tool for us to uh, figure out where we're at in life, where our stress levels are. I absolutely feel that when I get into the cold, um, I would say, so as you know, there's so many benefits to, to cold exposure, um, but it's a little bit different for every single person. And at least from my own experience and then people I've talked to, you know, it's not like every single person lists off like 40 different benefits. They're like, I experience all of these. I mean, maybe some people might, but for me, it's like usually like three to five kind of top benefits that I commonly experience. Um, and managing stress would be one of those top, those top like heavy hitters. It's like yeah, I get mood. into the cold, mood, and if mood, I'm in a really sh mood, yeah, yeah, huge anxiety. One. Yep. Um, and when when I'm in that state, like when I'm in a, a, a state of high stress, like just not necessarily from that day, but more so maybe like that whole week, I was you know heavy loaded with with work and life, right? And then I get into the cold, and I absolutely feel it. like it's like a direct mirror of what's going on in my life. And then the experience I have in the cold, what I mean by that is like when I have a, an ice bath or some sort of, you know, cold plunge and it's very intense, it's very difficult. I, I'm like fighting through it. I can just like, I can feel it. I can just feel that stress in that moment. Um, and then I look back and I'm like, Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going through a lot of stress right now. And and then it goes away. Like I get out and it's just like, it's like a clean slate. It's like a yeah, clean it's a reset. Wipe. Was, it's a reset. Like, the word came to my mind straight away. Like, yeah, it's a, it's a reset, right? Um, mm -hmm. Because of all the hormonal things that are kind of changing, you know, all those like, you know, all the happy hormones, if you want to call them this, you know, they start spiking and they start like increasing. Um, you know, once you've done that as well, like once you've gotten out of the ice bath or the cold, you know, the what we call avanto here in Finland, the hole in the ice. Um, mm. It's a beautiful word, avanto. It's a beautiful word. Um, it is. It really just means the hole in the ice. Once you get out of there, I mean, there's this kind of feeling of accomplishment, but then also you don't have the time so much if you've been in there for a while. You don't have that same, the, the time to really right then and there kind of really reflect on it so much because you probably if you've been in there like 10 minutes or something you're going to have to start warming your body up so you kind of get some physical movement back as well so it becomes that sort of connection with the body once again don't mm -hmm. have the time sort of like uh, until later that you might feel a little bit of you know jitters or the cold you know sh shivers shakes 
but it's not until like later on where you're like, Phew, yeah, I feel good, you know? Like it was hard to get out of bed in the morning and then make my way down there. And it was like, feel like I was dragging the feet a little bit. And, you know, it's been a pretty, pretty difficult week. And the girlfriend or the boyfriend's been a little bit like this lately. And, ooh. and then all of a sudden you're like this. Uh, an hour or two, even an hour or two later, you still feel so good. You, you want to send a nice message to that, that boyfriend or girlfriend. And you want, to, you want to sort of be like, hmm, yeah, okay, this feels great. Let's go. And then, then it becomes a question of like utilizing this and sort of like setting it up, um, setting up your uh, day where it can kind of incorporate those those you know maybe uh, moments of clarity or productivity or flow state whatever whatever you you would refer mm. to like in your whoever is using whatever lingo. Um, but these moments you can kind of set up your day strategically where you kind of implement, like you use the ice bath or this kind of reset so you can clear the mind. You can maybe jump straight into this kind of creative mode or, um, you know, write, write the next chapter of the book, um, mm. do the, the assignment, um, study for the exam or do something creative, you know? And that's why like people like Tony Robbins and whoever else, they do, they do these kind of ice baths just before they go on a stage in front of like thousands of people because it gives them that clarity it gives them that mm -hmm. reset so they, that everything yeah, else focus. is creeping up on in the mind it's like oh okay we're here to do this now yeah yeah it's beautiful yeah i notice um just to touch on a few more things with the cold i also love just that stillness when you especially in uh i notice it more when i'm in a natural body of water like in lake or river mm. um nothing wrong with a nice tub but or cold shower but uh when I'm in that natural body of water and it's usually like after 30, the first 30 seconds, and then you kind of settle in, you can gain control of your breath again. And, uh, there's just something beautiful about that stillness that it's, it's peaceful. It's, it's tranquility. It's med meditative. You were talking about how breath work was kind of like your first uh, form of meditation, a conscious breathing turned into a meditative practice. I look at, at the cold in a similar way. Mm. yeah yeah i mean like um you know the the cold is the cold you know what i mean like you if, if here in the baltic sea when i go where i go to my little my little spot there that i keep that hole open uh year round mm -hmm. um you know day to day it's like more or less the same temperature the water i mean it doesn't it doesn't vary deviate so much it's uh mm. you know the the sun may be out one day very rarely in winter by the way in finland <laughs> it's be cloudy and a bit snowy or something um you know it's the, the weather kind of changes but the, the the temperature of the water is the same and we as people that were the only variable we're the ones who go in there carrying whatever in there and are mm. feeling whatever we feel and and some days feel easier than others other days feel more intense or maybe a little bit you know or maybe i'll only stay in a couple of minutes today or however it goes but we are the variable and it's not until we kind of that's why it's the ultimate equalizer when you get in there like i said it's a it's a it, and it leaves you with that reset um mm -hmm. because whatever you're carrying in there's an opportunity to kind of it kind of strips or peels back some of that stuff uh you can kind of leave it in there you can leave it in there you can wash it away and as to your point about the natural elements, yeah, I love it. I lo I'm the kind of person who, okay, there's some some places where I go where I wear the some sort of uh, water shoes or whatever because you know you never you never know what's kind of below. Um, mm -hmm. But actually, if I can, I'll I'll always make sure that I have my feet connected to the ground. I'll, I'm the kind of person who loves the you know the the mud kind of you know going between the toes, full connection with the ground. Mm. Um, you know, I love the feeling of the, the wind, uh, the breeze on the face, the water on the body, you know, maybe even connected, you know, the ice as well. Every, mm. Everything like this. Um, I, I love all that. I don't want to, like we, as we said at the start here, a bit of a theme here is to feel all those things, to feel all those little, the little nuances, you know, not to kind of shy away and try to like minimize the amount of connection that the body has with the elements and with the nature. But to actually maximize that, and I think that's a that's one thing that sometimes people miss that trick. Um, you, we all we already know that if, if for example, if you're taking taking an ice bath or going out to a body of water in the morning, 
we know that if you even even if the light is not so bright, you can reset your circadian rhythm by just getting a little bit of light at the start of the day. And especially here in Finland, we don't get that much light. It starts, you know, in the in the peak of winter, it's only a few hours that the that the um, the daylight <laughs> is kind of present. So you mm-hmm. start to reset your circadian rhythm. You ground. You release some of those negative ions from the body. Uh, you you're getting you you're having that contact with the water. We're getting the blood flow. I mean, there's so much value you get from just like the full connection with your with your surroundings and you don't mm-hmm. you know like you said the cold showers are great ice ice baths are great but there's something there's you know there's there's something missing you know what i mean that you or you could have more and that's not to diminish mm-hmm. any of those it just means that you can actually have this uh, more holistic and more kind of full full fulfilling uh, experience mm-hmm. with the cold when you include nature and maybe some friends too you know you've got this nice support uh, group and people having fun together so you've got that social aspect covered as well yes yeah i just got very excited when you mentioned the social aspect because uh a few of my buddies here in chicago we have uh formed a group now we're we're in uh we're in may so the the water here lake michigan is starting to warm up a little bit it's still cold yeah. enough to get in Too cold, um, but yeah it's still pretty cold it's uh it's probably about 50 degrees fahrenheit um so what was so great though was throughout winter we had this group uh that we could just you know in our text thread send out a text saying hey i'm going tomorrow and there'd be a few people who'd respond i'm in i'll meet you there you know sunset or sunrise yeah, love it. and there's a huge you know it's 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 a big uh aspect of all of this is having that accountability factor having that social aspect having a group of like-minded people um to go into something that's very difficult going into cold water is not really easy for a lot of people. So to have that, that group setting is, is really crucial. Yeah. And there's, and there's also like a support, right? I mean, you know, there's that kind of, uh, let's say positive pressure of when you have uh, people together, uh, you feel a bit more safer. It's like, if you go to the gym and you want to lift a little bit extra, if there's somebody to spot Mm -hmm. you, you can Mm -hmm. do an extra five, 10%. And it it could be said that maybe it's the same, same case for the cold exposure as well. You might, you might feel a bit more safe, safe and supported to do something different or or you feel safer to, to explore a little bit more inside of there. Yeah. And you also mentioned the importance of, of sunlight. That's something I'm exploring a little bit more lately. Um, in the morning, you know, when I first wake up, I go out for a walk with my dog and, kind of like what you were talking about with the cold exposure of being outside, I like to look at that as you know, something so basic as walking, uh, basic movement, but it's good exercise for me. You know, it doesn't have to be uh, an intense run or intense lift, you know, workout. I do enjoy those things, but on a day-to-day basis, I enjoy just going out for a long walk, getting fresh yeah. air, sunlight, movement. I'm with my dog. I'm seeing people. There's that social aspect. Um, it's just a great way to, to start the day. Yeah. And, you know, like, um, I would love to hear more about uh, if you, if you, if you, uh, the power really, of our breath. One of the best protocols you could do is, uh, that's really, you know, if I, it's possible, I, I don't know if it's always possible is to take your shoes off, you get the grounding, you get a little bit of cold exposure by just walking around with your, your bare foot, bare feet. Uh, mm. as, we, as you mentioned, as I also referred to before is getting that, uh, initial daylight. So that mm-hmm. uh, you know, so that the body recognizes that it's day. Uh, it's circadian rhythm should should sort of like uh, set up a better sleep rhythm for later on in the evening. Provided that you you know watch watch when you have your caffeine and and not too much mm-hmm. food before you go to bed and all that kind of thing. Not and one thing I learned for me personally was to have sauna uh, early in the evening is not so good for me. If it's the the, the later the sauna is for me in the evening, uh, the more um, you know. It, that peaks my body temperature uh, and actually it, it gives me a bit more restless sleep and I'm more more prone to having some sort of like crazy dreams and things like that when my when my uh, body temperature is uh, a little bit like like even you know you know how the how everything works the homeostatic response is that like if it's only just a couple of point one or two of a, a degree uh, higher it has an effect you know so these kind of things are like really really easy easy to incorporate in the day. And like you said, movement is another thing, like even just stretching, like how many people like, like it would be just so beneficial if people just even just do some stretching, 
You don't have to go mm-hmm. outside. It's like, you know, they call Chicago the windy city for a reason. Sometimes it's not that pleasant mm-hmm. to go out there. But, of course, if you have a dog, you have responsibilities, you know, that is, there's more of a, a reason or a kind of drive to go and do that. But mm-hmm. uh, if, if not, I mean, there's no, there's no harm in doing some stretches. I mean, everyone has, usually has a space in the floor where you can actually do some stretching, you can put some music on, mm-hmm. you can do a podcast like this one. And, and you, can still, you can still get some value there. But moving the body is so important, so important. And when we live these sedentary lives and we've been indoors a lot lately, even more than usual for a lot of people, uh, super important. Super yeah. important to get some movement going on. You mentioned something very interesting around the timing of the day of when we do, I think you were referring to sauna use, how you mentioned towards the evening before bed, if you do it, then it kind of disrupts your sleep a bit. Yeah. Um, do you experience anything similar with the cold? I personally enjoy doing cold exposure in the morning. I actually don't think I've tried doing a whole lot of cold exposure at night, um, but I have talked to people where they say that actually helps them with their sleep doing it closer to bedtime. Do you have any personal experience or any kind of recommendations on timing of day? Uh, yeah. Okay. So the, the first part of that was about sauna. I can talk, I can share some, ex- my own experiences with sauna. Uh, I'm fortunate mm-hmm. enough to have a sauna in my house here, like many uh, houses, pa- apartments here in Finland. We, most, uh, not most, but a lot, a lot of apartments and saunas have, uh, uh, be, you know, houses and apartments have sauna. Sorry. They'll be, Cross, cross contaminated there with what I was trying to say. Um, so yeah, it's like available all the time. And um, mm-hmm. for me personally, um, I set up my days where I have sauna. I would say on average, I have sauna five times a week. And I set it up so that uh, it's usually times of, of, of the week where I've come back from a training. So I'll try and like, when I say training, I go to the gym, um, I'll lift some weights, I'll do some sort of um, aerobic exercise, some kind of cardio related things, running or some rowing or something like this. And, and, or, you know, like this combat bike is actually one of my favorite things, doing some kind of sprint kind of work on that. Um, and actually I, I, always, if you're doing this hypertrophy, uh, training, like, uh, you know, breaking down muscle, skeletal muscular tissue. If you're trying to break it down, uh, what you want is uh, to go to the sauna like immediately after this training, within one hour. So that's what I try and do because obviously when you go to the sauna, you you increase uh, the blood flow. You get a lot more of the nutrients pumped straight back into the muscle and you want the muscle reparation to occur like immediately or as soon as possible. So having some kind of like, um, you know, that's where you would you know maybe have some protein and things like that or whatever your kind of post-workout um, protocol is. You have a little bit of something, not too heavy, because I don't like to have too much food when I go to the sauna, but you have something so that it, so you have nutrients uh, inside the body, and then actually the sauna opens up, you know, vasodilation, gets the blood flow, gets the nutrients hitting um, all the muscles, and then, of course, you get the added benefit of the um, testosterone levels spiked, uh, as well as the HGH, human growth hormone factor spike. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is within one hour after the training. So I'll try and do this. I'll try and do this like, uh, you know, and then if, then when we look at the natural for, for most people, the spike in natural testosterone occurs from somewhere between 3 to 5 p.m. So if you're kind of getting, getting to the gym um, around those times, you're kind of like hitting, you're hitting everything in a pretty – like pretty orderly way, you know? Um, so that's it. This is where I try and time it. I try and time it like this. Now there's what I was referring to before about being too late was when I start to have sauna like eight, nine at night and then trying to like, mm. you know, it, there's a combination of like having a sauna or maybe fasting as well. And then all of a sudden you're trying to get your three and a half thousand calories in a very, very short amount of time and then go to bed with this kind of like digestive system, like, op, like mm. operating heavily. This is not working. Mm. This is not working for me at all. And I think many people might be the same or there are some people the same. So I try mm-hmm. to steer clear of that and just kind of try and keep it in that optimal window. Now, as you're talking about the cold exposure, yeah, I mean, I'm the same as you. I like in the, in the morning. I love it in the morning. Uh, it's Like I said, I love that reset. I love that kind of um, fasted as well. 
Uh, one tip mm-hmm. I would give as well for some people, uh, some people might just, uh, like some people have to have a coffee in the morning before they, they go anywhere. I don't do that. I don't have coffee because it's a, it's a vasodilator um, and it kind of, in a way, uh, starts starts the blood flow and it starts the, you know, it starts the different hormones going on the body. I like to be as, as kind of dry and clean as possible, let's say like this. Mm-hmm. But I definitely always have uh, some sort of Himalayan rock salt. I'll take like a tablespoon of this stuff and I'll put it in like a, a, a pint of water. So I've got some minerals in the body. It doesn't affect your fasting at all, as you know. Um, so I'll have this in the morning and then I'll go to my, my spot. Then I'll do the, the, the cold exposure. Now there are yes. some... There are, there's a lot of uh, conjecture about this because there are windows of um, what's what's the exact word here? Um, you know, there's like these suboptimal windows of time where for some people, uh, windows of risk for people is what I'm trying to say. Windows of risk for some people where there's a, because you get like this natural rise of cortisol in the morning anyway, those so-called so- mm-hmm. stress hormones. And for mm-hmm. some people, if they have like a weak heart or if they have some kind of, um, you know, some sort of like uh, issues going on, some health issues lurking, um, and then they have they have the natural uh, rising of the stress hormones, but then also, you know, the same, you know, adrenaline goes through the roof and cortisol spikes and all the rest of it. This is not good for some people. So there'll be there's some studies that show that there are more whisk, risks of um, like heart heart related problems or some some things of this nature for mm-hmm. certain windows of time in the morning. Each to their own. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. That's good to know. You know your body. It's you know you know where you you know what's good for you, kind of. Yeah, it's always a risk. And then would that be the same for? late in the evening like before bed is there anything there around good or bad or just kind of experience it for yourself and see if it works yeah you know like you like you said there's some people that swear by um you know it's not a good thing oh it doesn't work for me if i have too much um adrenaline pumping through the veins uh then i go to bed it's not good for me i'm overactive i'm overstimulated but we have this thing called breathing and breath work, right? I mean, there's a way that you can kind of like downregulate and you can um, kind of, you know, you don't have to have this long tail for the adrenaline, mm-hmm. the stress hormones or um, you know, cortisol, whatever. Um, but then there's, then there's the, the other side of it too is that, um, you know, if you think about things like spike mats, you know, these spiked mats, mm-hmm. I can't remember the exact name of those, uh, conductor mattress, I think, uh, I think something. Yeah, you know the ones, the spike mats where people sleep on these. I know it's a mat. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like a similar. It's a similar thing. And if, uh, well, one other example I could give is if you've ever been to an amusement park of of uh, you know most times we kind of go there maybe on a date or we go with somebody or family members. We go in there sort of early evening. And what happens if you go on the ride? I mean, you get this. You get the same spike of, you know, the nervous system switches on. Same way the mattress does as well, right? The nervous system gives you this, like, oh, there's a stimulus here. But then how mm-hmm. those those mattresses work is that it, it's like, okay, something's happening here. The nervous system activates, but then actually it goes calm. It relaxes, it shuts down a little bit and says, okay, this is here to stay. It's all good. And you can remove the mattress and you feel like super relaxed after that. Same mm-hmm. way with the amusement parks, the level of adrenaline, you get that adrenaline dump. All the, and then, you know, you get back home and you're like, oh, man, I'm like, I'm done. Like, I've got to go to sleep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it really depends on the person. Um, and it mm-hmm. also depends on what, what kind of situation uh, you're in as well, you know, like what kind of are you, are you people running around from one thing to another to another to another. And is the nervous system completely overstimulated? That's another thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I've, I've been... Yeah, it's, it's, I think before I really deeply got into the breath work, I would say that I was like, uh, in an unhealthy place with the nervous system, push, 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 push all the time. And I had all kinds of trouble with the sleep. And I'm like, you know, I felt like eyes were hanging out of my head, and I, you know, you big bags under the eyes and stuff. I'm now giving a quick check if I've got the bags under the eyes, not so bad at the moment, <laughs> but, um, you know, it's like, it, you know, you're wondering why, why can't I sleep? It's like the, the nervous system's just overstimulated. 
and you enter the vicious cycle because then you wake up, you can't sleep, then you have to get go to the coffee and other stimulants to kind of pick yourself up, nootropics or whatever whatever your whatever your go to is, and then you're in, you're entering this cycle, and then you know this mm-hmm. total, you, you just kind of like fall asleep for a few hours and end up. Th- three or four hours can feel like it's a, an amazing amount of rest when you're going so fast, you know? So yeah. it's, you kind of got to look at the whole, you're going to, I advise people always to look at the whole day. Like what are you trying to achieve through the day? What's your rhythm? You're going to do your thinking or your creative work during the, the early part of the day. And you're sort of lifting all the sort of um, physical kind of stuff towards the end, latter part of the day, maybe coming back to the end of uh, early night time to do some reading or some sort of, you know, writing or creative things, journaling, diary stuff. Mm-hmm. But you've got to kind of kind of build your day, what you want to achieve. Is it really necessary to do everything in all days, or do you give the cold exposure its own slot in the time? Mm-hmm. You know, you don't have to have the sound of the same day to put that to put extra uh, burden on the nervous system, or do you need to do the do the uh, cardio together with the with the cold, which is what I advise. And maybe you couple the sauna with your, um, you know, your weightlifting kind of training, which is the way I do mm-hmm. it also. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that approach of looking at it from you know big picture and you know, what are my goals? What is my lifestyle? What, what am I trying to achieve here? And making tweaks to your schedule, see what works, see what doesn't adapt and it as you go. Like you said too, I mean, you know, if you're a part of a group and someone says, hey, let's go, it's a great, day. you know, let's go, it's, oh, it looks magnificent, let's go in the afternoon for a swim. Hey, you got to weigh that up too. You know, there's a fun factor sure. here too. I mean, this is what gets lost. I'm, I'm looking at um, everything I'm mentioning here is sort of, you know, deducting numbers or getting the abacus out and saying, okay, we'll do, do, and doing the calculations. Mm-hmm. But actually there's those times, you got to leave times and get, get on down there when you just bloody feel like it you know get get on yeah. down because a few few friends want to do it and you know you might let's be honest you get a few cool pictures together you know you get that kind of you can build that and say hey that was a good memory remember that time on the sunday afternoon mm-hmm. where it was so cold and we went anyway i mean that's that's some of the that gives you uh something too yeah absolutely i totally appreciate that fun factor it's very easy to get caught up in the health space, the biohacking space around data and numbers and, you know, rules and tools and, uh, you know, this is how you do it. And it's, you know, some of that has optimize a time and place. everything. Yeah. 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 And some of it has a time and place depending on your goals, but um, sometimes it loses that funness of it and adventure. And to yeah. me, that's what it's a big part of it. Right. Yeah. The adventure parts, the adventure parts, like a huge part of it. I mean, that's, that's, to be honest that's what got me into the ice diving like you know Mm. to strictly speaking there's not like there's there's not any added benefits like cold exposure benefits of going like going under the ice you know what i mean like diving under the ice and popping up through another hole on the other side there's not any additional health benefits that i know of um it's just more about the adventure it's more about the fun it's more about the exploration of like being in this kind of strange environment that actually too not that many people uh, get an opportunity to be part of or witness and that was a huge mm. that was that was practically the only reason to do that you know was the adventure and the excitement and the fun and the exploration what's the uh, the adrenaline rush like when you go under the ice like that because i've seen videos of people doing that i'm like oh man i don't think i can do that <laughs> Yeah, to, to be to be really honest with you, it is the, it's even calmer. It's even calmer mm. and more uh, relaxed than a normal ice bath. It it gets you straight. At least for me, it gets me straight into this um, calm mode. It's like uh, mm. you know everything in your body. I mean, the trigeminal nerve, your vagus nerve. Everything's working for you in the body. It's a beautiful moment to connect with the body and all the different systems that are working with you and for you. Um, and, and of course, you have to think about it like this too. You know, <laughs> the average person probably not thinking like, you know, everyone's thinking that uh, most people think that, okay, every alarm system in the body is like telling me, do not go in here, this is dangerous and so on. Mm. Yeah, in some ways, it's true that, 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 that those things are true. But then again, when you just go a little bit deeper below, like below the surface, pardon the pun. 
um, you start to understand that all these systems in the body are very much they're there. They're there for this. They're there to kind of facilitate and help help you along in some of these um, processes. You know. Um, so yeah, you don't feel cold at all. Uh, wouldn't I? Don't feel mm. cold at all whilst under the water. Um, you know, mm. maybe a little bit cold depending on what the weather is like when you pop up on the other side. But it's just a, it's just this beautiful, serene um, moment to yourself actually, and with with a couple of safety divers there as well. But yeah, you don't feel cold. You feel, uh, you just feel, you, you feel with the water. You feel one with the water. Actually, I can say this. And you've got this roof on top. You can play around. You can be a Spider Man on the top if you want. But then you look down and it's kind of dark and but super clear and just this. Whoa! I'm 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 just here in this this world. You know, your own kind of mm. domain, if you will. Sounds fascinating. I don't know if I'll ever do it. <laughs> um, we'll get you here. Maybe we we'll get you here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I should. I shouldn't say never. Um, maybe I'll do it one day. Hey, trust and it's me, pretty. Pro- I was going to say, like, if uh, if anyone have told, hey, fifteen, twenty years ago, if anyone would have told me when I was living in Australia, hey, you know, in a few years' time, you're going to be going un- diving under the ice, and I would have been like, huh? Excuse me. <laughs> like what kind of medication you want or maybe you should be on some medication i don't know yeah yeah fair yeah and that's pretty common in in finland right because you have i'm assuming a lot of frozen lakes and ponds and and natural bodies of water like that yeah i mean we have 187,000 lakes here the whole country is water i mean this that's, is, that's a lot yeah uh, 187,000 lakes pretty much all of them i think or absolutely all of them uh, freeze over over freeze, the course yeah. of the um, the winter. Baltic Sea freezes as well. It has a, a very interesting composition of fresh water. Uh, not 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 fresh water. It's salt water, but the salt content so low um, that it, it it actually goes below zero. It freezes hmm. below zero. Whoa. Yeah. So the water is like really cold, and then you've got like maybe fifty fifty centimeters, sixty centimeters of ice that you have to get into as well in, in uh, the Baltic Sea, in the Bay areas. And then some of the lakes, depending on what kind of depth they are, um, de- you know, they'll, they'll vary also, but about 40, 50 centimeters of ice. Wow. That's wild. We have, uh, we've discussed breath work throughout, throughout our conversation today, but I want to lean in a little bit more about the power of our breath. Yeah. Why is our breath so important? So important for our health, for our lifestyle, for our well-being, for our mood. What? What? what why is our breath so important? Well, you know, like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna uh, tread the path that's been trodden so many times. You know, like of course, I think we all by now understand the relationship between our own breath and the nervous system and in fact many systems inside of the body whether it's the respiratory you know the respiratory system itself uh circulatory system which is kind of how the blood moves around the body then we look at the endocrine system which is how the hormones move around the body in the blood Mm. um then we look at you know we look at every everything in the body um and we can actually kind of trace it back to this one autonomous process that we can kind of grab control of you know we can jump into the driver's seat and we can kind of drive drive the car you know um this is what conscious breath work is is like literally the definition of conscious breath work it's it's unconscious breath is passenger seat looking out the window watching life go by and then conscious breath work is behind the wheel with the foot on the gas pedal on the brake where you want to take it maybe rip the handbrake if you need to whatever you need to do and then sort of like taking taking this baby where we want to go so i think it's very important for people um people are starting starting to become aware of this but then when we go a little bit deeper we start to understand that um you know the same way that um things rise in the body different feelings different emotions different states we start to understand that like uh, trauma and past experiences and um you know some of the things the unhealthy habits that we've all may or may not have experienced in a life the breath work is a is a is a sort of like a tool uh, i actually hate to say it as a tool to be fair i mean we can use it as a tool but it's actually it's much deeper than that in my opinion the breath it's mm-hmm. much much deeper um if we like 
Mm -hmm. This this might sound a bit philosophical, and well, it 100% is philosophical, but you know, the breath, breathing is the most freest thing you'll ever do. You know, bar none. Nobody, nobody tells you when to breathe. No, because okay, there's some rare moments where somebody's real, like you know, if you're an MMA fighter and someone's trying to choke you out. I mean, of course, somebody's trying to by default tell you when you can or cannot breathe. But the the point I'm making here is that like this is this is the freest express. Like we say in I'm writing this book actually about exactly about this and. Um, you know, inspiro it mean, is a, like a Latin word for inspiration, which means inspire, which means breathe in, right? You've probably heard this before mm -hmm. somewhere along the lines. And, you know, the, the, the idea here is that every inhale is an inspiration, mm. really, like an inspiration. And then every exhale is an expression, is an expression. So every, every inhale grants you an opportunity to express yourself in your life, how you, how you want to be. Some of us, it's, uh, you know, we, you know, it's very important for a singer to inhale and then be able to, you know, project a voice, uh, and sound, mm -hmm. um, for some of us, it's, uh, running or some athletic endeavors. That's how we express ourselves very physically. And that's also requires us to be breathe in. And then, you know, sometimes you know, uh, brace the self because we want to lift something or we want to push something or we want to punch something or how whatever sports we're in, we want to shoot the ball. Um, the breath gives us an opportunity to express ourselves. And, and uh, you know, uh, lately there's been some sort of stress around this. There's been a lot of stress about when to breathe, how to breathe, uh, whether it means uh, masks, putting a mask over, over the face and alter, altering the breathing in some way. Whether it's socially, who to be around, uh, is it safe? How do we interact? You know, knowing that knowing that um, the, the possibilities of breathing. Um, if you really look at how groups of people have come together around breathing, it's it's quite it's, it's entrenched in who we are as humans, mm -hmm. as as, as mm -hmm. tribes of people, as groups of people, as communities of people. Um, you know, the Vikings like. <sighs> Like this, you know, choirs of people, whoa, you know, singing harmoniously together, uh, you know, kids singing together at school. It's it's kind of, you know, teaching and giving so much, um, you know, like uh, chanting, you know, this chanting, mm -hmm. this beautiful hum, you know, mm hum -hmm. noise, uh, sound, the universal sound, I should say noise, that was horrible. Um, <laughs> well, then, for example, if we really want to get like, you know, if you really want to understand the connection of the breath, go to any um, sort of like, um, you know, sexual experience you've had with another person, you know, and how the breathing uh, creates an intimacy and creates uh, it creates this possibility to go in the same track with the person, you know, and, mm -hmm. and heighten that experience. So when we kind of look at all this, when we kind of look at the role of the breath, I mean, this is this is a, an amazing connective um, possibility every time we we breathe, you know. And not only that, but like I said, it's an expressive thing. It's made possible by the breathing. And uh, as soon as people realize uh, and really, really uh, embrace and embody this conscious aspect of the breath, then things become like more lighter. And it's like, whoa, I have like. You know, you know the drill. You've heard this before. I'm sure people have been talking about it and, and rattling off the old 25,000 breaths per day, uh, mm -hmm. which I hope none of your listeners are actually breathing that much. Hopefully, hopefully it's much less, uh, more calm yeah. or more still. But let's, be, let's, let's just pr pretend that everyone's breathing 25,000 times. And so, there are certainly people breathing 25,000 plus times uh, per day. Mm -hmm. if, if, you, if you're not understanding... If you're not conscious about doing something that you will do 25,000 times in a day, okay, and you're unconscious to this, how will you breathe? How are you breathing? You are then breathing um, which, uh, as a reflection of your environment, your surroundings, and your experiences. And if your experiences are, uh, I don't know, watching media all day long, being told about how many, uh, you know, 
COVID cases or what the latest election thing or the war in Ukraine or the whatever the thing is. And, you know, and then knowing on some level that there's, you know, there's a, there's a sales aspect going on here, you know, that there's a shock factor going on here. Um, you know, they're, they're trying to, you know, get your eyes on the show, your attention and things like this. And we're not, I'm not trying to jump in some conspiracy thing here. It's just like, that's a fact. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. anything, any media is craving for your attention, right? And if you're, if you, if they have your attention, then what the information they share with you will ha- reflect in your breathing and how then you're experiencing this life. Mm-hmm. So if you're not conscious and you're not, and you're breathing for yourself, as to the, the oxygen mask analogy also, then how are you breathing? And then who is actually, uh, I wouldn't say dictating, maybe it's a bit strong, but who's influencing your breath? Mm. This, is the fun, this, is the, this is the part that I, I think a lot of people uh, skip over and they're not paying this part of attention. We say conscious breathing is just connecting with the breath, breath but like how fundamentally... Um, uh, you know, important or sort of like maybe necessary is it for us to to really connect with that and really really embrace mm. it to that kind of level where we every breath is the opportunity. So yeah, there you go. Like you you asked the question and I and I, I went there yeah. because that's how important it is for me and that's how I I, I believe how important it is um, or it can be if we really want to get down to it. Like what experiences every everything is touched by the breath. The atmosphere, yeah. the, the, the actual atmosphere that surrounds you right now, uh, the relationship that my hand can float through the atmosphere, it, it welcomes this, right? And at the same time, it gives so much to us, the atmosphere, meaning oxygen coming coming in, and we try and give something back, which is kind of the CO2 in a way. Mm-hmm. But then also the, the, the possibility that we, I mean, the, like think about the trust that you must have or that we could or should have to welcome that atmosphere into your own body in like welcome mm. that inside and let it nourish you and let it be part of you. I mean, this is, this is really, this is where, this is how important I think breathing is. Super important. Um, yeah. You touched on so many awesome things there. And uh, as you're speaking to all of those different ideas, much of what you've been talking about throughout this whole conversation, I'm just sitting here like I, I relate, I can, I can feel what he's talking about. Um, I love that. You, you mentioned a word inspire. I, I actually have it as part of my, my podcast uh, intro. I have uh, it's called a, a 10 word kind of phrase. I'm in this um, podcasting uh, mastermind group. Yeah. Where we have a, a podcast coach and one of our exercises was to come up with like a 10 word phrase where you, recite that at the beginning of each of your episodes and um, everyone listening, they heard me say, you know, inspiring you to a new life of breath work, cold therapy and plant medicine. And it was so funny. The coach that I, I work with was saying to remove words like inspire from your 10 word phrases because inspire is overused and it's kind of vague. And then I looked at the word, I was like, but it means to breathe. Like that's what my podcast is about. It's about breathing and, and, cold therapy and the breath is such a big part of everything that I do. I just love that word inspire. So I end up going against his wishes and I kept it in there because it felt right. But this is, this is also the thing, right? I mean, um, you know, you know, then it goes inspire, conspire is like meeting people breathing together, you know, conspire, Mm. conspiracy, you know, Mm. um, I think you can give new life, this is this is exactly what I'm what what my 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 mission is if you want to say it like this. I'm really trying to bring uh, draw attention to to the breath in a way where people take it to like to to really connect with this. Like you know some of the some of the most beautiful experiences I've had and I've witnessed in in any of the you know uh, courses or workshops or experiences that I've created um, for and with people. Um, often these are the, these, this kind of like these moments inside of there it, when people realize what the breath is giving them and what, what's possible if you allow the breath to move through you mm. and, and welcoming the breath, you know, even just this fundamental, um, shift inside of the narrative, uh, has helped people 
uh, with breathing disorders, you know, dysfunctional breathing and asthma, asthma and things like this. Like just, just mm-hmm. understanding, just this, this, just the philosophy of this, and sort of, uh, sort of shifting that narrative uh, that the CO two is bad and it's negative, and and even this, like we we spoke about stress hormones, which is just, you know like a horrible a connotation uh, that kind of people you know. Uh, refer to these stress hormones, adrenaline dump and uh, cortisol spikes and things like that. It scares people. Mm-hmm. But then again, when mm-hmm. we look at some of these big practices like the Wim Hof method and some of these other breath holding and um, you know free diving um, training programs and things like that, uh, and pranayama, kombaka, you know these kind of things. I mean, they, they, this does so much for us. It actually boosts the the natural immune like it, you know it, it it has so much effect on the immune system and the innate immune response and it balances out your white blood cell counts and this the this, this sort of in a way like rebalances or resets your stress hormones i mean mm-hmm. you know what i mean so sometimes the shift in the narrative is 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 what most what many of us need and then mm-hmm. by just shifting the narrative it kind of opens up a lot more possibility and we're like hmm actually this feels great yeah, someone told me there's adrenaline here. Who, come on, who, who, who honestly puts their hand up and says adrenaline sucks? It's it's not good. Mm-hmm. It feels great. Mm-hmm. Of course, there's the possibility that we go too far with that and we want more and we chase the dragon and things like that. Mm-hmm. But actually, once we really start looking at, at at what the breath can give and what kind of possibilities it has for us in our bodies in the physical sense, but then sort of psychologically and then. You know, I, I look at breath like the infinity loop, you know, like this infinity, like the sideways, sideways eight. And it's a very, very physical thing that we do, process that we do, if you want to call it a process. You know, there's a lot, lots of things moving inside the chest, inside the body, you know, intercostal muscles, the diaphragm. Actually, uh, in this book, the diaphragm is the center of the universe for you. It's the center of the universe for me because this is how, this is how I experience this this universe and this this life through the diaphragm mm. it's only made possible mm. by this amazing little kind of breathing apparatus of course there's some supporting uh infrastructure here but actually the the diaphragm is is making uh, making it all possible and this is anywhere you are in this world and in this life it's your this is the compass for you this is your this is how you're going to set, step into any environment and then experience that and become part of the atmosphere and the surroundings so, you know what I mean? Like it's it, like very philosophical, but if we can if we can start thinking of it like this, and we can start shifting this narrative and kind of embracing um, truly how beautiful the breath is, and, and truly how how for so many centuries, so many centuries, a thousand, one thousand, four hundred, five hundred years, uh, different cultures and groups of people have been kind of understanding a um, very, very, very spiritual practice that breath work is and like i said it's a physical sorry i didn't complete that uh loop it's the physical then there's the sort of psychological aspect but then in the middle somehow when there's when they they connect into this like little eight there's something really amazing that happens that quite frankly not any not no one really really truly can say we have some theories we have some suggestions we have some hopes some possibilities there for what what happens when those those things merge and they kind of connect, but that's a magic shit right there. <laughs> like really, mm-hmm. that's the, that's the the sweet spot. And I, mm-hmm. I another analogy I use is you know when the the river runs through the sea, the most fertile part of of when the, uh, is when those two bodies of water merge. When the when the fresh water merges with the salt water, that stirs up all the nutrients and some of the so, some of the sediments and some of the little small fish kind of get stirred up. And this is the most fertile part of the bodies when the bodies of water connect. And this is a little bit like breathing too, right? This most fertile, mm-hmm. most possible, like the, which is just like flush with possibilities right here where these things are connecting and colliding, if you will. I love those analogies. It's uh, like I've been saying throughout this conversation so much that I relate to, so much that you're speaking to. I'm like, yeah, I've experienced that. I know exactly what he's talking about. Yeah. Um, for people that are interested in learning more about breath work, and obviously, you know, working with someone like yourself, a coach, maybe a group setting is really powerful. 
Wim Hof style breathing is super powerful. Having those deeper sessions. But let's just say someone that's kind of new to this, they want to learn how to breathe more efficiently. What are a few things that they can keep in mind to just improve their their breath throughout the day? You know, I'm a big I'm a big um, believer in. You know, I referred to it before. We're talking about um, twenty five breaths per day, twenty five thousand breaths in a day. Mm-hmm. What does that truly look like? You know, a, resp- a normal respiratory rate for an adult is is around about fifteen to eighteen breaths in a minute. And, um, you know, if we start venturing too far out of that, then we're kind of like, that has a whole, like it shifts us into another whole metabolic rate, um, in, you know, we're kind of amped up, we're kind of the motors ticking along. We need to, um, you know, we want more food. We want more fuel in the body. So Mm -hmm. basically breathing less is one of the core, core things. Um, of course that's, you know, we want to breathe less for 23 hours of the day and we want to have that one, maybe two hours in a day where we're um, breathing in a certain, like maybe Wim Hof method style breathing or some sort of rebirthing uh, kind of modality or, uh, I don't know, we have to come up with a new name for these things, techniques and methods and mm-hmm. modalities. I mean, it's not like, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> maybe medicine or, you know, like, uh, there's, you know, magic, magic sauce or sweets or well, I don't know. But um, one hour for that kind of practice and then maybe you're going to, hopefully, people are going to be moving around, like you said. Maybe it's the 20-minute, 30-minute walk with the dog in the morning and maybe it's some other kind of cardio-related stuff or maybe it's a one-hour session in the gym. So breathing less, number one. Um, and also, like, uh, again, as to the physicality, I mean, what, what, kind of, what kind of work are you putting in for the breathing? I mean, do you respect it enough that you're going to be able to do like five to 10 minutes worth of stretching, like you know, opening up the rib cage and then intercostals, doing some work with the diaphragm, doing some sort of uh, breath holding stuff, maybe uh, uh, some sort of protocol where we're kind of opening up the body and keeping, you know, you got to remember that, you know, the degradation of the VO2 max and, um, you know, the respiratory rate. Uh, the atrophy of the lungs is is from like 55 years i mean you lose some percent percentage every year um and then Mm. this is you know this is obviously not something that you can kind of rectify later on in life because you just kind of wither away so um so it's super important to keep everything open and to have really really like do a lot of work in here so as much as we, as much as it's not sexy stuff to do, uh, you know, in a way, um, although yogis will have, will, will, will argue otherwise, of course, rightfully so. Opening up everything, having everything work for you is a huge thing. Mm. You know, the next thing I'm going to say as well is probably nasal breathing, nose breathing, like mm. every every man and his dog uh, is saying, um, as as my mum would say. Um, <laughs> But then again, there are times where mouth breathing is super, super useful. Uh, some of the most powerful Wim Hof method experiences that I've witnessed and, and my, in myself and others have been uh, by breathing, uh, using mouth breathing because, of course, the CO2 release. Um, but, yeah, bre- breathing through the nose is like the, the, the way to go because of all the filtration and actually to be to be to just drill right down into the core of it i mean the the nitric oxide factor is should should never be discounted you know you've got people that are doing mm-hmm. this you know eating beetroot and got all kinds of food that like sort of naturally have this nitric oxide uh occur. i mean you have to eat a whole bunch of beetroot to be able to um fulfill the same amount of nitric oxide that basically happens up here in your paranasal sinus because of your because breathing through your nose and then when you mm. think about what it actually does for you, um, you know, it's an antifungal, antibacterial, like kills pathogens uh, inside of all of that craniofacial structure, in your, you know, all the breathing stru- you know, infrastructure of your face. Uh, but then it also vasodilators, so it opens up everything and makes it easy to breathe. So these are kind of like the mm-hmm. three, three big things that I would, would say. But then also like what one thing again as to what we were talking about with the ice bath is having fun with it like it, like it's it's kind of annoying after a while to be breathing and you got all these people that have to have this straight sort of stoic or you know like this kind of buddhist like serious face like come on 
it, it, it should breath should be joyous. It should be a very mm-hmm. fun thing to do, and it should it, it, it gives you so much. If someone gives you a present, and you sit there and like like. You know, with the, you're at least going to pretend that you that you enjoy it and you're happy about it, right? Even if you don't like the attention and things like that. So, if you look at the breath as a gift, I mean, you know, why why are you not happy about it? And why why can't you attach some joy towards that and be sort of, you know, this gratitude or this happiness that surrounds the breath and um and sort of like you know not to take it for granted because you never know, you just never know in this life when the when the next one's coming or when it's not. So mm. keeping that joy inside of it, and that's what I try and um, uh, welcome and invite into yeah. the, into the, my sessions is that like people have fun with it. You don't. It doesn't have to be serious. We don't have to um, get this. You know, we don't have to look like we're like looking around and everyone, yeah, yeah, everyone is so serious in here. I better be serious too. No, if you feel happy about it, show it, show it, be mm. it, live it. Yeah. Yeah, that joyful, playful aspect is so so important. Um, for me, some of the the best and deepest breathwork sessions I've had is when I've gone outside of that kind of box of of structure. And there's total value that I that I get from breathing in a group setting, having an instructor. Um, I mean, let's be honest; even there are some really great apps out there, like the Wim Hof um, breathing. He's got a, a mobile app. I've used those. There's stuff on YouTube. Like there are things that I find great value in, especially in 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 person with a with an instructor. But then from there, it's like you learn about some of these basic uh, methods, techniques, modalities. Um, once you get a grasp of it, you're like, okay, kind of what you were saying before, getting into the driver's seat. I have control over how how this experience plays out. I can extend the the hold. I can extend the breath in or the breath out. Like, play with it. Have fun with it. That's super interesting, right? Because that's that's the thing. That's exactly uh, yeah. You're you're kind of like now you're kind of right at the core of what I'm what I'm welcoming and inviting. Hopefully, some of the some of your viewers and listeners here is to really, um, you know, look at the breath like it's yours. Okay, we mm-hmm. you know, like I mentioned, there's this beautiful, harmonious, and quite frankly, very spiritual, connected moments that we have when we breathe with other people. But act- actually, at the end of the day, your breath is yours. And um, you know, as a facilitator, of course, I love where I love when people um, feel uh, either the call or the pull to sort of go a little bit, you know, uh, try things and be experimental. Mm-hmm. But, you know, in these group settings, I mean, there's a, there's such a high value on breathing together. And there is a, this kind of like, um, you know, a bit like the ice bath uh, thing that we mentioned earlier as well. Like, you know, there's that group, that group, uh, not pressure, but there's a, there's a, there's a, maybe a group willingness or sort of encouragement to kind of go in that more in this direction with it or more in that direction. And it's not really uh, what you might do if you're at home listening to the Wim Hof, Wim Hof app. And mm-hmm. even, I would even on, on that point, I mean, some of the most, uh, most valuable feedback I've gotten has been from people in my sessions where I've done similar kind of breathing with some small nuances or some, some small uh, tweaks of my own where people have said, Hey, I've been doing it on, you know, breathing with Wim on the app for three years and I've never felt like this before. This is amazing. Mm-hmm. Like this, this is completely, yeah, because it's, because, you know, if you do this long enough, uh, the body reacts, the body responds. And, uh, you know, I think if I'm not mistaken, I haven't been on the app for such a while. Um, I should probably be embarrassed to say that actually, but I've been like an instructor for like five or almost six years or something. No, I haven't actually been on the app for such a long time, but, uh, if I'm not yeah. mistaken, it's still it's still Wim's voice and his kind of very yeah. Let's be frank, uh, quite pushing, uh, you know, in encouraging, uh, suggestive, mm-hmm. sort of very masculine way uh, to keep going. And uh, he's like really about the huffing and puffing, and and you know, mm-hmm. and for a lot of people, that's a beautiful entry point in, and it kind of lifts everybody up, and it gives them this kind of like, okay, let's do it, you know. But then when you start to go, you can kind of take it in some different directions, different, uh, different um, uh, language, different suggestion, different invitation inside of there. And uh, you can kind of re- recreate that again or reposition it in some different ways. So mm-hmm. whilst the breath is yours, um, 
and you should you should definitely keep it like that. Sometimes it's nice to um, go with the instruction because it might mm-hmm. lead you or give you this sort of pathway or this kind of like opening the doors to go a little bit in a different direction with it. Uh, you know, yeah. that, that might not have been possible before as well. Yeah, breathing in a group setting is it's tremendously powerful, especially as you said, if you've been breathing with an app like the Wim Hof app, which I was for a little while. Oh, and the numbers, had, you know, the numbers is the other part, right? So that's the thing. <laughs> that's the part I missed. Sorry, I missed that part. You know, we no, got people, good. I don't know if you've been in those sessions, but people have got like looking looking at the phone and like looking at yeah, the number yeah. or the wristwatch and it's like, how am I? Yeah. You know, that's, that's cool. And I understand that that's valuable to some people so they can sort of see a progression and they can see, you know, like a progression. Like how, how okay. Ooh, we talk about intentions and what are you trying to breathe for? But like, really, we're trying to, me- like, you're trying to hold your breath, like, for a certain amount of time. I mean, is that really what it's all about at, at the end of the mm. day? And, at, at, you know, it's a great entry point. But then as, as you're probably about to say, <laughs> or maybe maybe we're going to go, we're, we're kind of touching on that now, which is why I kind of set that off in me that I didn't kind of uh, uh, mention this, is that, you know, at, at some point or another, it's like F the numbers. Mm-hmm. F the numbers and go go with the feeling. And Wim says that anyway. Feeling is understanding, I think you said before, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, in many ways, that's that's totally true. That's the yeah. feeling is understanding. And then again, the, the gift or the connect, connection with your own breath and the, the understanding that, hey, I've got this beautiful possibility every time. This is enough for a lot of people. Then, the, then it doesn't matter. Like the fact that they're so relaxed, actually the breath hold time, if they, you know, actually extends. Mm-hmm. And they start, they start having a deeper experience in there anyway. So it's multifaceted. Mm-hmm. And then it just, it just kind of, it seems like this progression uh, where we really focus on the numbers and this kind of progression in the, in the numerical form. But then it kind of ends up over here somewhere, which is kind of left, by the way, left field or whatever you want to call it, where people start having these really, maybe enlightened experiences, more wholesome sort of like emotional releases and, and uh, these joyous moments as well. Yes. Yeah, that's exactly where I was going with all of that was uh, Sorry, the yeah. emphasis on, no, you're good. I mean, you summed it up beautifully and probably better than I would have, but that was my early experience of an intentional breathing practice with Wim Hof, Wim Hof Method was through the app, such a focus on the numbers, such a focus on how long can I hold my breath? And then I went to a, a workshop and that was the first experience where I breathed with a, with a group and with an instructor and just laying there, letting go, not worrying about numbers, not worrying about the breath hold and just surrendering and allowing that experience to be whatever that experience was. But for me, it was just like a full surrender, be in that moment. And, and then, like you said, it's, you actually go a little bit further and deeper when you're not really focused on what those numbers are. You can actually let go. I mean, the word I use is surrender um, is yeah. kind of the, the first thing that comes to mind. Yeah, and it takes a lot, right? I mean, this is the thing. We, we want to control everything. We want to hold on to so much. And then, um, mm. you know, there's something like breathing is is the, it's it's such an act or such a, yeah, like an action of the body or process, if you want to call it this. You know, it's some, something that's happening in the body where very quickly we can see that if there are those uh, limit, limitations, either mentally or then physically, or then physically, then mentally, or mentally, then physically, whichever whichever loop or whichever way it shows itself, um, you know, these are the, these are, the, it shows up in the breath and then you can, then you're kind mm-hmm. of like, you're trying to hold on to this this thing where you don't actually understand it. This is this is why I'm trying to bring a lot more attention towards this, you know, uh, and trying to trying to really really toe toe the line here for this for this idea that the breathing is so so much. It, it gives everything. It give, absolutely gives everything. You know, you know. People will say, "How long can you go without water? How long will you go without food? How long will you go without breathing?" And in order of mm-hmm. importance, it's like you know, it's it's uh, it's there to be seen. They're the real numbers mm-hmm. that count, right? They're, 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 they're the real numbers that count. So mm. this surrender, this possibility of surrender, it's, it takes some people such a while to get there because um, because of all these factors, because they've had a hard time with breathing before. And it's like, well, but if I don't, like I've had this shortness of breath and it feels horrible or it feels really, if you know, you do this 
quite lengthy pause or breath hold. It feel like I start, you know, the diaphragm is like bouncing a little bit and I feel that hot flushes in the face and so on. It's like, yeah, it's okay. It's your body. It's the set, you know, it's your body. All these things are just normal processes in the body. They're just signaling to you something, something's happening or not mm-hmm. happening. Then you start unpacking, uh, the so-called stress responses in the body where it gives you the, the adrenaline and this kind of, you know, and then it might, you might get some more red blood cells and you might do this and it might do that. And you're like, whoa, actually kind of probing that or kind of like poking that or kind of steering in that direction just a little bit more, leaning into it, I like to say often, hmm. um, starts, starts sort of giving us more and starts sort of t- giving us a lot more of those physical um values and the things that are super important for our body that you might not get if you don't you know kind of probe or steer it there and you know again i'm full of analogies i don't know i'm good like I do analogies but like I, i'm kind of like pouring them on you here but the one, one, one of the biggest, <laughs> appreciate it look every everything in my opinion life is like this elastic band right that elastic band if you find if you find the elastic band on the ground one day or you see it on the ground one day you walk past it you go back one month later still there okay good three months later still there six 12 months later then that day you go and pick up that elastic band and you try and like stretch it what happened it snaps you might snap in half so the systems in the body are exactly the same we do not keep the form we don't keep that flex and we don't keep stretching them it becomes this flaccid kind of, you know, the body runs on, a, on efficiency where it doesn't need to give energy towards that, doesn't need to give resources towards that, that functionality. And then all of a sudden, you know, it's the same reason why we wear a bit less clothes or we go and do the cold exposure or we do the sauna. We give these kind mm-hmm. of stressful situations for the body, but that keeps a lot of pathways open and gives us so much benefits because it sparks the body into a reaction where, where you know, it sets off a chain reaction in the body, the hormones start changing or the, um, you know, in the, in the cold exposure, we're now starting to see, you know, there's a lot of stuff about the, the brown fat, but now we're looking at the way that the uh, synapses in the brain, the, the way that neurons are connected, you know, and, and how long they, that those connections last because they're kind of forced in it. Like the body's almost saying, okay, like this is a stressful situation. We need to function at a higher level and we can't risk this not happening. So we better bond the neurons mm-hmm. together, you know, they better connect in a better way. Otherwise, you know, something bad could happen. So, mm-hmm. you know, we start to, we start to probe and we start to like stretch those, stretch those out and it gives us so much reward and so much value. Mm. It's such good vis- uh, visuals. I'm a very, I'm a, I'm a visual learner. Like I love having that, that idea to connect to a visual. Um, mm. So I appreciate, I appreciate your analogies actually, <laughs> even if you're laying, laying them on me today. Yeah. And you know, like to be, to be really, to be really open with you, I mean, this is, this is part of the philosophy, right? I mean, like this is just trying to get people to, um, to look at breathing in new ways and trying to connect mm-hmm. it with, uh, tr- trying to connect it with like really, really tangible things. Um, you know, a lot of people will go, like you said, you know, you can go into a class or a facilitated breathwork session and you have these really, really deep, whoa moments or whatsoever, but it can be very overwhelming for people too. And then they understand that, that it's like, why are my ears ringing? And why is this happening? Mm-hmm. The, fl- the white flashes are happening and da, da, da. yeah, I'm, I mean, you know, sometimes we have answers for some of those things and sometimes not, but if you yourself understand that you it's you who are doing this someone's mm-hmm. guiding and facilitating and holding a space they're providing a container for you and everyone else in that in that session um and you know if if, if you feel comfortable and you feel safe and you feel connected uh, possibly with uh, you know the facilitator in some way you're connecting with the words or the guidance or the suggestion or the invitation plus interacting sort of in some way with the people around you this is this is this is where this is where the a huge value is as well but then you know what i mean like it's 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 your it's still you who's doing this it's still actually mm-hmm. like it's still you who have if you want to say the power of this mm-hmm. 
And everything that I'm talking about here boils down to this one point of exactly that. You have the power, like really the power. The energy is the power. You know, breathing gives you the energy. Uh, you have you have the right to breathe however you want. You have the, the right to produce energy however you want. You just got to take the responsibility of that too. So inspiring. This whole conversation has been extremely inspiring, inspiring for me. Uh, I do have one final question for you, Lee. Before I get to that, uh, where can people learn more about you, your website, your socials? Yeah, just my name. Just my name, uh, Lee, Lee Ewan, L-E-I-G-H-E-W-I-N uh, dot com. Uh, that's, my, that's my Instagram um, handle or whatever you call it. <laughs> And you know, every, all, all social media is just my name. I've made it as, as easy as I can uh, for people to connect with me. Um, I haven't been so active on there because I've been so focused on all these these larger projects uh, that, I'm, that I'm talking about. You know, a lot of that's mm-hmm. filtering through into what, what we're talking about here today, a lot of this philosophical stuff. But, um, you know, I'm here, about, I'm here for the respiratory revolution. I mean, that's basically what it comes down to, you know, like uh, people, yeah. giving people the the power back in a way the individual the power back that's what this is all about empowering people via the breath i think people are kind of on the right track with this uh through different practices and different you know wim hof method and oxygen advantage and whatever else is out there but then um really really giving it some depth in philosophy that's a little bit more touches on the ancient uh and the the traditional Mm -hmm. things but then gives it some new context and, and some sort of like lifting people up via the breath. I think this is where it's at. We, we need this. We need this. I, I, know, I know you agree with this. We all need mm-hmm. uh, um, some more of this. And, um, you know, you, when, once you connect with your breath, like we say before with the oxygen mask, you, you're so much, you, the way you breathe, honestly, if, if you breathe how you want to breathe, you're going to live life the way you want to live. If you have no control mm-hmm. over your breathing, you will become, you will become, a, you know, a mere subject of your environment and, and what you're exposed to, and uh, you'll be breathing however your reactions are around you. And this is the, this is where it's at. This is the different. This is the switch that people will get it or they won't get it, unfortunately. Mm. And that's where I want to bring uh, breathe life back into this kind of this kind of um, discussion, and. Um, yeah, one other thing I've got is a, a methodology of my own. So I'm putting together, um, like, it's kind of like a meditation, uh, meditation, but also connective, uh, connecting exercises that also has two or three breathwork practices inside of there. And it will become uh, some kind of, uh, yeah, that's, this, is, this is why I've been touching on this methodology, tech, uh, you know, techniques and all this kind of discussion. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what is this actually? Like, truly, what mm-hmm. is this stuff? I, I call it some, like, it's just like almost like a fundamental connective stuff, you know, in my, yeah. I have to figure out what, what that is. But uh, yeah, there's, I'm going to give people the keys, the, the, the framework and the, the, the keys to the car, you know, so that they can actually run a, a beautiful session, facilitate a session where it touches on a couple of different practices, it gets people connected. Gives, gives them all all of the little tricks and techniques how to bring people together and breathe together. Mm. And uh, I think this, this is also, there's a lot of competitive uh, things out there where people don't want to give uh, the full, they, they, they want to give you this kind of shell of the car and it, it's, you know there's no air conditioning and there's no power steering mm. and there's no anything. The, the car goes and it moves around. But there's no, there's no the bells and whistles. And I think this is what's missing mm. in a lot of these um a lot of these practices you know or find your own way find, you know so this, mm-hmm. is, this is this is the kind of work i want to be involved with and um yeah i'm excited about it the book is coming as well about all this uh the respiratory revolution is the one as well so i'm kind of excited about this but there's a whole bunch of work to be done so that's, that's a big 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 loop there, but anyway, that's I'm still kind of around in social media, but I'm um, really trying to focus my attention and my efforts towards the, the, the big vision here. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. And then uh, you have a website as well, right? Yeah, yeah, just just uh, first name, uh, leeyuan.com. 
leon.com. Oh, and by the way, if you're interested, if you want to go there, uh, I've got my own brand. I actually, yeah, it was like last week. I got the official um, trademark for the US. So nasal, nasal, like the kind of NASA logo, uh, NASA logo, mm-hmm. nasal brand for promoting nasal breathing and kind of breathing in general. That's, that's yeah, I, I thought it was so Amazing. so fun and so um, such a beautiful thing, like, uh, you know, to kind of empower people and sort of there's a brand familiarity there as well. I got in touch with NASA. It's all, it's all clear. It's all good. It's been uh, officially stamped and it's all good, uh, like in that way. So nasal.io is a, a place where you can kind of get some cool gear, some breathing, breathing things, uh, you know, breathing tools like the actual nasal dilators breath belt and then also some cool gear as well people want to represent Amazing. represent the breathing i love it yeah i appreciate all you're doing and to kind of reiterate what you've been talking about i believe our breath has the power to change the world and i know that's a big and bold statement but when there's more people that are breathing the way we're talking about right breathing more efficiently being more conscious of it having an intentional breathing practice, bringing that into all areas of their lifestyle, whether that's exercise, better sleep, mood, regulating the nervous system, emotional health. Like, this is how could this not change the world if we're all more aware of it and we're all bringing it into our lives? Uh, well, you, you know, this is a pleasure to talk to people like you because you get it, you know. You're, you're living this already. You're, abs- mm-hmm. you're actually living this already. And, uh, you know, like it's not a big statement at all it's a, it's a completely normal thing to say i would even take it further and you change your universe you change your universe by how you breathe and this is the thing i actually like seriously i i feel like like ugh, like uh, emotional just talking about it like this like really because it's so it is it's not a bold thing this is the this is a, in a way not not to give you a you know not to knock you here but this is like the, the limiting belief that it's like well maybe it's a bold statement no Absolutely not. How can you? How can anyone say that the way if you don't breathe, uh, how you want to breathe, that you don't can't change your world? You can change your world one hundred percent. You will change your world, and then you will change mm-hmm. your position in the universe uh, by doing this. And the, and the way that you breathe is how you connect with other people, is how you interact with other people, and then you change the people that are close and dear and loving to you and around you. You'll change. Uh, your interactions with them for the better as well. So mm. it's not a bold statement at all, actually. Uh, I would say you 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 got to add a bit more VAT to that or some some tax to that. <laughs> you got to get that right up there because this is this is yeah. where it's at. This is how important the, the breathing is. So yes. it's really it's really a pleasure to uh, talk with you um, because I can feel that you're you're connecting with this, and I and mm-hmm. I truly believe that every like. There's a space for maybe not everything. There's some people that won't love this depth or, of philosophy, yeah. but you know, the work the work that that I'm trying to do here is trying to give people the practical um, touch points they can plug into this in different ways, um, and then hopefully it just empowers them. It draws them to this one moment, uh, this one point where yeah. they just each breath is like a gift each breath is like a possibility each breath is an inspiration and then how we express it that's the that's where that's that's where it's encapsulated right there mm, so beautifully said i love that uh that inspiration that you've given me there mm-hmm. i do like to wrap up a conversation with this final question is what does it mean to you to live a good life uh good it's a good question look a, a good life for me, uh, you know, the last couple of years especially has been like, you know, for many people it's been about loss and it's been about sort of like limit, limitation and you could mm. you could say scarcity in many ways and a lot mm. of decisions, not everyone, but a lot of decisions um, can be made based upon this scarcity thinking, like things are being taken away. Um, I, I feel differently about this. Um, very quickly I understood that, Actually, this is this. Uh, you know, I don't. I don't have any. Um, I uh, personally, I was like going around giving a lot of workshops, and it was about the physical, me being physically somewhere, and then giving that physical, that energy there to the people that are around me. 
mm. I, I realized that um, for me, it, 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 I solidified my, my, my goals here, my, me- my mission, my message. And whilst everything felt like it was being taken away in many ways, in many you know, governmental things and mandates, this and this and this and this, actually, actually what was given to me uh, personally was this reaffirmation that um, you know you always have you always have the choice you always have the possibility and you there's a possibility here where we can all hone in if we choose to do it we can hone in on what we what we want to achieve in the life and for me it was about um, just bringing my message I'm in a fortunate situation at the ripe ripe old age of uh, forty that. I, I, everything's led me to this one point where I'm, where I'm like right where I need to be. Breathing is mm. the thing. This, um, this is something where I can, I can hopefully help people, um, be a good person, grow, be, 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 learn, be better every day, um, be accepting of myself, love myself, and then I can share share that with other people like as as like a full loop to what we said at the the opening of this podcast and um for me uh being better uh and hopefully being able to uh inspire or encourages uh, inspire there's the word again uh others to be better as well that's where that's where i want to be that's Mm -hmm. that's really what i want to be and the freedom the freedom part is so big to me uh inside of this there's no there's no mistake here that the that there's a freedom message in and around the breath this, this is not by accident. It's because I think this is this is to me a symbol of um, how I want to live my days here in this experience. You know, for, freely um, being able to pour myself and my passions and my my heart, heart and soul into things that I'm that I hold dear to me and the, and the relationships that mean so much to me as well. So this is wow. this is a, this is a good life for me, and I feel like through I'm. Um, so you know there's there's something in this for everyone this message of freedom anyway and then when and everyone's breathing everyone understands uh that they breathe and then kind of connecting these two things together and giving like i keep saying respiratory revolution that's that's literally what it is it's being like Mm. are are we kind of you know revolving means going around in a circle or we're really in the revolution you know Mm. are we just going around in circles like, are we just going like this or really seriously living in the revolution, being a part of the revolution, moving, revolving, you know, together? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So beautifully said. But yeah, I appreciate you, all of your work you're doing. Uh, I, I just, I, after this conversation, I see you as a model for this whole space around breath work, cold exposure. And uh, thank you. you're bringing this gift, this gift of breath to people that, might not really be aware of it or really not know where to turn or what to do. And it's just awesome to see people like you in the space. So thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, mate. I really appreciate you. I, res- I respect, I-, I take the words too. Trust me, there's a point in my life where I wouldn't, wouldn't be able to accept such, a, such mm-hmm. you know, kind words. I, I would always have mm-hmm. to say something back or, you know, I'd have to, there's some uncomfortable thing, but I, I learned to accept it. I learned to welcome yeah. the words and, and kind of bathe in them a little bit too, because it lifts me up. Totally. It gives me it gives me more fuel to for my mission too. So I really appreciate you. I appreciate the work you're doing, and um, you're on the same mission as you know our compass points in the same direction. If you want to say it like that, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, awesome, cool. Well, Lee, thank you so much. You have a good rest of your day. Thank you, mate. Appreciate it.